Hello and welcome back to more AI The Somnium Files, where last time we started our journey down the green route, which is very clearly designed not to be played before you do the blue and pink route. Or sorry, after you play the blue and pink route, because boy howdy, we have gained some information from those routes that makes this entire thing really silly and a pointless waste of time, but we don't have any choice. We have to play through this if, we're if we want to get to the end of the game, so we're just going to have to make the best of it. Alright, let's begin our journey. By heading off to the cold storage warehouse. I stepped into the cold storage warehouse. The air conditioning wasn't running, but it was still cold. The temperature hadn't raised much at all. The cold air sunk into my skin, but the center of my body was burning hot. Iris and Oda were slicing two by this ice cutting machine. Iris and Oda. Iris's estimated time of death and cause of death have been confirmed. The video was not a recording. It was a live stream, filmed in real time. Which means Iris's time of death is 3.20 a.m. Iris also had her left eye removed. Yeah. And like Renju and Shoko, Iris's left eyeball has not been recovered. Right here. Iris and Ota were. I am sure you are already aware of Ota's time of death. Just before I arrived. About 3.30 in the morning. And the cause of death. Right. About that. Ota had a stab wound from a kitchen knife in his side. Correct. What was the exact cause of death? Was it the knife wound or... I cannot determine that. I can conclude that the knife wound was at least close to being fatal. Even if Ota was still alive on the workbench, he was certainly on the verge of death. If he weren't already extremely weak, we would expect to see more signs of struggle. If Yoda was trying to help Iris jumping at the criminal, the letter was scuffled and Oda ended up with a knife wound in his side. He lost all power to fight back, forcibly put us at the costume and finally cut up with the ice machine. Why did the culprit put the costume on Ota? Unknown. An ice cutting machine. Iris and Oda's bodies are under autopsy. Their bodies aren't here anymore. Can I... Please... Please... Please, thank you. Uh, what else we got? Equipment. Video camera and laptop. This is what the criminal used to stream. All of these items have been bought from pawn shops and thrift stores. It would be difficult to determine a suspect from them. I have logged into the Wi-Fi in this warehouse. Okiura Fishery Co. Ltd. is listed as the owner. However, I found the password written directly on the router. Anyone who saw it could have used it. I have done some research. As the name suggests, the company is owned by the Okiuras. The same Okiuras we know. Renju's father created the company. Another connection to Renju. No, actually. Currently, Okiura Fishery has nothing to do with Renju. The company has been managed by office representatives for the past 17 years after Renju's father died. Renju holds no shares and is not involved in the management. In short, Renju did not inherit the company from his father, and it was instead given to other persons. But it can't be a coincidence. It certainly is suspicious. Date, we should get moving. Officers from the local jurisdiction are checking the warehouse thoroughly. We will not find anything of importance here. Yeah, you're right. You can ask CSI to inform you if they find anything. All right. Okay, uh, I'm headed out. Let me know if you find anything. I let them know that then left the warehouse. Yeah, a lot of like I said. You were supposed to do the green route before you set off down the blue slash pink routes. When I left the warehouse, I saw Pewter. What is he doing here? He walked up to me while I was trying to work it out. Date, I have to talk to you about something. Huh? About the original Cyclops serial killings. Why this all of a sudden? Because I want you to solve this case, Mr. Date. I want you to find who did this and bring them to justice. So, if I can help you, even a little... Why didn't you say anything at Abyss? The boss was there. I couldn't speak openly in front of her. So, I decided to meet you here. Alright, let's hear it. 
Earlier, I told you that I was completely certain the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. I am absolutely certain the original Cyclops killer could not have committed these crimes. Let me explain why. I'll start by telling you the identity of the Cyclops killer. Although, it's more accurate to say, killers. More than one? In the first series of killings, the culprit had an accomplice. One of them was born a murderous psychopath. The other is Rohan Kumakura, the previous chairman of the Kumakuras. They each had a role to play. The murderer committed the homicide, and Rohan removed the eyeball. Eighteen years ago, Rohan took a woman's eye. She was already dead. He put his finger into her eye socket and gouged it out. The reason why was simple. He was fascinated by women's eyes. Their beauty stimulated his greed and his desire to possess them. He needed to have them, to make them his own. Driven by this instinctive impulse, he took the woman's eye. From then on, he acquired a grotesque obsession with the eyes of dead women. He was very particular about his need that the eye belonged to a deceased woman. But even being the head of a Yakuza gang, there weren't too many opportunities for him to indulge. His deepest, darkest desire went unfulfilled for years. However, he soon met his ideal partner, the aforementioned psychopath. The Cyclops killer would commit the murder, and Rohan would take the eye. Thus, a mutually beneficial relationship was established. This was the origin of the Cyclops serial killings. At about the same time, you were assigned to Abyss. He was born with a brain dysfunction. Due to damage to the posterior pituitary gland, he was unable to properly secrete oxytocin. Oxytocin is a peptide hormone linked to feelings of love, affection, and trust. It is colloquially referred to as the love hormone. It causes a tranquilizing effect which improves mood and relieves stress. It is normally secreted when the body makes contact with an object of affection, such as an embrace or caress. I'm sure you know what this implies, but he was unable to feel love in the way that we do. However, he was able to experience a substitute. His brain was wired in such a way that allowed him to feel satisfaction through other means. Due to the unique idiosyncrasies of his brain, he was able to release large amounts of dopamine and endorphins by performing a certain action. What was it? Murder. Dopamine is a hormone linked to the reward system of the brain. The pleasant feeling attained through accomplishment is dopamine. Endorphins are a kind of brain narcotic. They dull pain and create a feeling of happiness. He got pleasure from killing people? It's slightly more complicated than that. Killing people was the only way he could get pleasure. He was 12 when he took his first life. That enlightened him to the pleasure of murder, which he would do again and again. That... I don't know. The details of the original Cyclops serial killings case have become nebulous over time. Even the official investigation material contains nothing of value. I am unable to draw any conclusions from them. You really have no idea? If I did, I would tell you. The original Cyclops killer had an accomplice. There were two Cyclops killers. And one of them was the former chairman of the Kumakuras, Rohan Kumakura. Rohan committed suicide by jumping to his death one year ago. That means... 
computer, tell me this. One of the original killers is dead, I know that. That means one remains. Who is he? After his fourth murder, he was arrested by the police. They actually picked him up on other charges. But, in any case, he is currently serving a life sentence in Fuchu Prison. Fuchu Prison? Yes. What's his name? In prison, he doesn't have a name. He is simply called Number 89. Number 89? I know who killed Shogun Adami. So, now you know why I said that. That the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. Because one is dead, and the other is behind bars. Neither of them had the opportunity. Yeah, well, unfortunately, we know way more than you about that, and you should also know way more because you know how body swaps and consciousness swaps work since you and Bob's the ones who told me about it in the first place, but that's fine. Moving on, then. To Matsushita Diner. Is Mayumi going to be aware of the fact that Oda is dead, or are we going to have a similar situation to the Red Root? The place was silent. It was so quiet, I felt like I could hear the floating dust. I stepped inside. I thought it was empty, but I saw a shadow in the corner of my eye. It was Miyumi. It was like watching a decaying old tree cling pathetically to the earth. She's not going to talk, is she? Date. I looked into the investigation report. Mayumi confirmed Ota's body early this morning. I see. I'm sorry. I want to be alone right now. Did you not hear me? I said leave! You gave me two seconds to do so. <laughs> Reminded that I don't like anybody that we met in the Red Root. Date. Let's go. She is in no state to talk. No attachment to Ota or you, for that yeah, matter. You're right. Alright, glad we stopped by. Moving along then. Let's go meet a good character. We haven't met one of those in quite a while. Zuki is curled up on the sofa. She looks like a small animal frightened by a predator. Oh, don't tell me you're not gonna talk too. Oh, come on. Mizuki must know. About Iris and Ota. Of course, the news was distributed heavily across the internet. Not just in Japan, but worldwide. Three days ago, Mizuki discovered her mother's body. Two days ago, her father's. This morning, two of her best friends. It is completely understandable that she is at her mental limit. Can I be left alone for a while? Are you okay? Yeah. She certainly didn't seem so, but I can't stay by her side forever. Uh, contact Abyss. See if they can get Mizuki a good counselor. Yeah, a whole whopping lot of good that'll do her. Understood. It's gonna be a waste of money. Stay with her for a little while, but we didn't speak. Having nothing more to say, I left. Wow, we are just getting nowhere today, aren't we? By chance, will Hitomi have more words for us? Or will this be another pointless endeavor? When I visited the Sagan household, I, felt, I found Hitomi with a hollow look in her eyes. She let me in and asked me to sit on the sofa. I agreed and sat down. But after that, I couldn't say a single word. The heavy silence weighed on both of us. Iris was my everything. We always went everywhere together. Whether it was buying clothes, or going to the movies, or taking a walk, or going shopping at the supermarket. When she was young, she would just hold one of my fingers. Her hand was too small to hold mine. Then it was two, then three. And finally she could hold my hand. But eventually, she left my hands altogether. She started crossing her arms, being independent. Even though she needed constant attention growing up. Her memories are a part of this room. And always will be. When she was a baby, she fell off that sofa and cried and cried. One day, she tore up her picture book all over the floor here. Another time, she drew with crayons all over the window. She painted my portrait on Mother's Day. 
scratches on the floor, chipped plates, bird marks on the table, stains on the cushions. Trying to graffiti a window with a crayon sounds like more trouble than it'd be worth. Everything you see. It all holds a memory of her, but why? Oda was one of my students. I taught him in elementary school. And he just refused to learn anything. Oda tried to help Iris and ended up... I don't know what to say. I have no words. Tell me, my entire focus is on this case. Is there anything at all you can tell me? I don't know if this is important, but... No, please, tell me. I may have told you this already. I met Renju's wife Shoko twice before. The first time at the wedding, the second time a month ago. That second time was in the waiting room of the prison. Prison? There's an acquaintance of mine from when we were younger. I visit them a few times a year. By coincidence, I saw Shoko. Don't think she noticed me, but I recognized her as Renju's wife right away. She was there for the same reason I was, to visit one of the inmates. Do you know who? No, I don't. We didn't talk. Which prison? Fuchu Prison, in Tokyo. Fuchu. Prison? I'm sorry to have bothered you. I'll be going now. I don't know what to do. Thinking about her. Dante, please, you, you have to catch them. Trust me. <laughs> Lovely. Moving on now. Now back to the scene of Date's idiocy. Again. Are you okay, honey? Huh? About last night. Well, at three in the morning, anyway. You know about it? It's on every channel. You have the face of a ghost. Do you want a glass? I don't need a drink. I need information. Do you have anything? Well, let's see. I do have... I suppose you could call it intuition. Tell me. The Kumakuras are involved in this case. Remember what I told you before? That there's a relationship between Ren and the Kumakuras? Shoko also has a relationship with them. You know about her dealings with the Kumakuras, right? So basically, two of the victims are linked to the Kumakuras. That must mean they're involved somehow, right? Not two. Three. Three? Iris? No, not that one. The boy. He came here last night. Ota? Yes, from Matsushita Diner. He's linked to the Kumakuras as well. Have you heard the rumor? Yeah, 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 we've, we've heard, yep, yeah, okay. The Kumakuras own a handful of real estate companies. They, of course, look legit, but they're Yakuza fronts. I'll call those real estate companies the K.E. to keep it simple for you. The K.E. followed in So's footsteps. They bought up land in Kabasaki.
Now, back to So. Have you heard of the plans for the casino in Kabasaki? So was the one who came up with it. I was born and raised in Kabasaki. I remember the landscape of my childhood, and I loved it dearly. But look at Kabasaki now. When I see images of the destruction on television, my heart aches like it's being chopped to pieces. See, that's funny because he literally does get chopped to pieces in a different in a different route. At any cost, Casino Town Kabasaki will give new life to the city. After that, so moved fast. He submitted the bills he needed to the National Assembly after drumming up support in the right places. The bills passed and it became an official government initiative. Decontamination efforts therefore increased at a rapid pace in the Kabasaki district. At the moment, the area is still considered off limits. However, the air in Kabasaki is currently purified to such an extent that it has no negative effect on the human body. If the plan goes smoothly, land prices in Kabasaki are going to skyrocket. And all that land is owned by the KE. And by So himself. The land he bought back for one billion will be worth ten times that soon. He's involved in some shady business. This is just another rumor, but the chemical plant exploding was no accident. It was done intentionally. By So and the Kumakuras, you mean? But there's no hard evidence of that. It's just gossip. What were we talking about again? Ota and the Kumakuras. Oh, right. You know how Matsushita Diner is close to the Kabasaki district? The chemical plant explosion made times hard. Foot traffic went down, sales declined. No wonder it closed down. Ota must hold a grudge. Someone caused that explosion. And if it was intentional, oh, he'd hate them even more. That's how I link Ota to the Kumakuras. Thank you, Mama. I don't know if what you told me will lead to anything, but... Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to waste your time. No, no, it was very helpful. I'm glad I can help, even if it's just a little. Well then, I'll be seeing you. Come back any time. Ay, ay, ay. I mean, I, I have nothing else to say I haven't already said. I played it in the wrong order. Although, even if I did play this earlier, I probably still would have been annoyed by it. I'm just doubly annoyed now. I didn't see her anywhere. Where did she go? Well, she isn't always here, correct? True. What are you doing? I thought it would be easier to talk like this. What do we have to talk about? A summary of the investigation, perhaps? What summary? We don't have anything new. That's not true. Huh? I was curious, so I did some research about number 89. I can't wait to hear all about it. As you know, he is an assassin with multiple confirmed kills. He is currently serving a sentence at Fuchu Prison. He was imprisoned six years ago. That's what Pewter told us. After his fourth murder, he was arrested by the police. Unknown. I cannot determine if they have any connection. Approximately one month ago, Hitomi Sagan witnessed Shoko in Fuchu Prison's waiting room. I am unable to say for certain that the person she was there to visit was number 89. After all, Fuchu Prison houses 2,000 inmates. But number 89 knew Shoko's name. 
I know who killed Shogun Adami. That must mean that he knew her somehow. It is possible. Pewter claims that there were two culprits behind the original serial killings. One was the former chairman of the Kumakuras, Rohan Kumakura. But Rohan committed suicide last year. That leaves one culprit still alive, number 89. But number 89 couldn't possibly have committed these crimes. He was in jail when each of the murders occurred. Correct. However, I do not believe it is accurate to claim that he had nothing to do with the incident. I know who killed Shogun Adami. I swear to God, if I hear him say, I know who he killed Shogun Adami, one more goddamn time. It's possible. Unknown. You don't know? No such person is listed in the family registry. It is possible he is a foreigner, but his nationality is unknown. However, I believe it is safe to say that he was born and raised in Japan. Let's talk to number 89. I don't know if he's telling the truth or if he's full of it, but he's our last remaining loose end. However, we need not go to him. We can bring him to us. Because that went so well last time. If we plan on sinking with him, it would be more efficient. Can you arrange that? I can. After cutting through some red tape, number 89 was, was to be brought to the HQ. He took considerable time to arrive, but for some reason, boss never showed up. Oh, good. Pewter's here again. Sorry to interrupt your busy day. So we're gonna go ahead and call the video off here. I, I'm just stunned playing this game for today, before we last video. Maybe the green route will get interesting soon, but it's failed to captivate me thus far. So we'll see how things unfold moving forward. That'll be for now. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next time. Catch you all tomorrow for some more Air the Somnium Files. Goodbye.